How's it going, everybody? It is Ethan Aron and Coder. Welcome back to Let's Build Twitter. I believe we are on episode six. I'm slowly going through and re-recording all the episodes that ended up getting deleted. Last episode, we made it so that we can go through the first step of the Twitter registration flow, which is just to give the first name, last name, email, and date of birth. Today, we want to go through and make it so that we can update our phone number as well as go ahead and create a verification code that gets sent to your email eventually. We're not going to get to the email part today because we had to go through and do a bunch of Gmail stuff, but we'll figure that out in the next episode. Also, I'm sure you guys have seen that we kind of split episodes up a little bit. I'm going to continue doing that. I don't really know how long things are until I'm done recording. So sometimes I have to kind of go through and split them up. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into Eclipse. So like I said, today we want to go ahead and get our email verification code set up and our phone number set up. So the first thing we're actually going to do is go ahead and go into our authentication controller and go ahead and make a new controller or a new mapping that allows us to send over a phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and say at put mapping and this is going to be to slash update slash phone i'm sure i could just leave out the update part because the put mapping kind of says it's an update and this is going to be a public application user uh update phone number and this inside of here is going to take an at request body and I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit and I'm just going to use a linked hash map like so. And this is going to take in a string string and we're going to call this body. So one, we are storing the phone number in the back end or in the database as a string anyway, so it's fine. And two, we could make a object for this, but since we're only going to be passing in two properties, it'll just be pretty quick to go ahead and do a linked hash map. First, we're going to say string username is equal to body.get. And we're going to store this in a key called username. We'll see exactly how we do that in Postman in a second. We're also going to have a string phone is equal to body.get. And I'm just going to call this phone. So this works just like a regular old hash map, um, except we're going to be able to send kind of like our JSON body and have it automatically be converted. So now we're going to go ahead and say application user, user equals user service dot get user by username. So this is going to be a method that we need later on anyway. So we are going to go ahead and create this method here in a second. Go ahead and save that. And as you see, uh, this is an issue, but then we're going to say user dot set username or set phone like so we'll pass in that phone number and then we'll say return user service dot um, update user and then pass in the user. So now we have two user service methods that we need to implement. So let's first go into our user service and underneath our uh, register user we're going to go ahead and actually I'm going to put it on top because this is going to be one that's used by a lot of different pieces so we'll do our public application user and this is going to be find or is it git let me double check it is git user by username and then this is obviously going to pass in a string username to find that user so here we're going to do something a little bit special. We're going to say return user repo dot find by username, username dot or else throw. So if we do not find the username, we're going to find a, we're going to throw a user does not exist exception colon colon new. So this user does not exist exception doesn't exist ironically. So we're going to have to create that similar to how we made this email already take an exception. So let's go ahead and create that. We're going to make this inside of the exceptions. Inside the exceptions package finish. I didn't want to actually make a new exception package. This is going to extends runtime exception. I'm not sure why it didn't uh, extend it for us, but this is going to need a serial ID. And then we're also going to do public user does not exist exception and do a quick no argument constructor. And then we will say super, we'll say the user 
you are looking for does not exist. So that will be in case we find a user, we try to pass in a user that doesn't exist. So now that should be one of the errors taken care of. And now we just need to go ahead and make the update user method. Again, this one is just going to be super simple. So go ahead and say public application user. We're going to say update user. This one is also kind of like a utility one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it at the top here, pass in our application user user like so. And then we're just going to say try. We're going to try to return user repo dot save user. So in spring data, all I have to do is say dot save. And if it already exists in the database, it will update it. And then we are going to catch any exceptions that occur. Again, if an exception occurs when trying to save the user, it's most likely going to be because you're breaking a foreign key reference or have something that's not unique. So we're going to go ahead and say throw new email already taken exception E. Although we want to do like that. And as you guys know, we already set up a handler function. That way, that's not an issue. So now all we have to do is go back into our authentication controller and actually make a handler for that user does not exist. So this will handle any time we try to update our user and something goes wrong or we can't find the user, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and say at exception, exception handler. And then this is going to be for a user does not exist exception like so dot class and then for this one it's got, once again going to be a public response entity of type string and we're just going to call this handle user doesn't exist not going to take in anything inside the body it will return a new response i'm going to scroll up a little bit so my face cam doesn't get in the way entity string like so and then here we're going to say the user you are looking for doesn't exist and then we'll say http status dot not found so obviously if it isn't found we can send a 404 so go ahead and import this guy and voila. So now theoretically, we should be able to update our Postman listings to actually be able to send this. So let's go ahead and go back into Postman. First thing that we need to do is go ahead and register. So go ahead and register. And as you see, we get our user information. So let's go ahead and right click and add a new request. This is going to be slash update, whoops, update slash phone, because we are updating the user's phone number. This is going to be a put mapping to HTTP on slash slash auth slash update slash phone. And maybe I should rename this to auth slash update dot phone. That's actually what it is. So now inside of the body, we're going to have some raw JSON and we are just going to pass in the username that we want to update. So username colon and then if we go ahead and go back to this request and grab my random username copy it and paste it and then we can put the phone phone this will be one two three and i misclicked one two three one two three one two three four and if we send this put request if all goes well you can see that now we have a phone number and if we look in dbeaver and refresh so let me go ahead and open this up Go to our public tables user and refresh our user you can see we now have a phone number so now the user can successfully go on and update their phone number everyone unfortunately i am going to, have to split this episode in two i hope you all enjoyed the episode and what we got done next episode we will go ahead and try to get the email verification code kind of generated and hopefully be ready to be sent through an email as always if you guys enjoy leave a thumbs up if you didn't leave a thumbs down all of the interaction helps out the youtube algorithm if you guys have any suggestions or anything like that go ahead and leave them in the comments below and finally if you don't want to miss any videos please sure to subscribe also hit that bell icon you know exactly when the videos come out anyway i appreciate each and every one of you guys peace out and i'll see you guys in the next episode